Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson. I'd like to make a video tonight to discuss the launch of Shelly. Uh, this is a very complicated thing. Uh, it's not like launching a normal cryptocurrency and it's not like launching a normal hard fork. Uh, the reason being is that we're going from a federated model to a completely decentralized model. And that has to be done in a very systematic, careful way. And so what I wanted to do was make a video and try out my surface here uh, and do a screencast presentation and kind of walk you guys through with a whiteboard, a digital whiteboard of exactly how we're gonna do this. So let me just clear the canvas and let's talk about it. All right, so in September of 2017, let's use black. I get to be Bob Ross today. Okay, in September of 2017, we released Byron. And Byron runs in what's called a federated mode. So federated means that there are a collection of core consensus nodes. And these nodes are basically responsible for running the network, meaning they make blocks. So since the beginning, those nodes have been operated by three entities, the Cardano Foundation, Emergo, and IOHK. And then when people install Daedalus, Daedalus would be a full node. So it would have a full history of the blockchain and also all the ability to validate the history. So nodes would communicate with each other. They'd send transactions to each other. Those transactions would be made into blocks by the federated network. And then the full nodes could validate that. So there was this beautiful interdependency between the users of the system and the core consensus nodes of the system. And technically, we could run this system indefinitely if uh, the three entities wanted to keep doing that or we found other people to do it. But the whole point of Cardano is decentralization. And one of the things that we've done is we've invested about five years of research into building a class of protocols living in a super set of protocols called proof of stake. And basically, the idea is that we want to go from a federated world, this world here, to a dynamic world. So this is static and federated. And we want to go to a dynamic and decentralized world. OK, so we had to figure out how do we go from the Byron design, this is Byron, to the Shelley design, where we have a dynamic and decentralized consensus algorithm. OK, so the first step in that was just seeing if we could actually get a group of people who would be willing to run Cardano outside of that federated set. And that was the point of the incentivized testnet. And that was launched in December of 2019. And basically, the ITN really is its own cryptocurrency. It's peer-to-peer. -peer, it has stake pools. It has delegation. It's a full version of Shelley, in a sense. The difference is, though, it doesn't have the Byron history. And so the idea of the ITN was to get data on some parameters. In particular, we were looking at things like how much ADA is staked. And I think we're approximately around 12 billion here, which I think is around 40% of the total supply. And then we were also looking at things like how many stake pools. We were looking at things like network quality. So basically, is the network stable? Is it up? When people uh, here are trying to send transactions, are they posting and validating quickly? Are we making blocks uh, and with the expected block schedule? These types of things. And here's the reality. The ITN was an overwhelming success. Our decentralization target was, instead of having three entities, to have 
1,000 or as close to 1,000 stake pools as we could get. It's a pretty big difference, three to 1,000. And uh, we've seen over 1,000 register, and I think around 300 are regularly participating, making blocks, which is a tremendous start for uh, basically a test net uh, that has some incentives behind it. Okay, so first step was to understand this model and make sure that lots of full nodes exist. And we are there, thousands and thousands of them exist. The next step was to verify that there's lots of people who would be capable of running the network. And we verified that with the incentivized test net. And then the final stage is to begin a phased transition from the Byron reboot to full Shelley. So let's talk about how we're gonna do that phase transition because it's currently underway. So step one, was to get everybody onto Byron Reboot. And built into Byron Reboot was basically all the bridge code to start the process of upgrading to Shelly. So we launched this in March 31st of 2020. And built within it is Ouroboros BFT, OBFT. And you're gonna see this term a few times. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna go from Ouroboros BFT, Byron, which is still running in that federated mode, this, this federated mode up here, these guys here. Okay, we're gonna go from OBFT Byron. There we go. And then we're gonna go to uh, basically Shelly, upgrade period or phase. Then we're going to go from the upgrade phase to Shelly hybrid phase. Okay, and let's walk through what's happening in each of these. All right, so with Byron OBFT, that's what you guys are installing when you install Byron Reboot. And that's going to be available next week for the main Daedalus uh, client. Flight Client 3 was just released today. Uh, basically, Byron OBFT is going to run for a little while. And in parallel, we're going to start releasing a series of Shelly Haskell test nets. And there's really three of them. So there's uh, the Friends and Family Shelly Haskell test net. Uh, so this is uh, an internal test net that we're starting to turn on. And some of the more prominent stake pool operators, people who really did a great job here, are going to be invited uh, for an alpha test. And the, the goal here is just to verify that everything we think about the node and the command line and these things uh, are working correctly. And that's not going to run for a long time. That's basically just a burn-in before we do the actual node plus command line Shelly test net. And this is really the, the first opportunity for the stake pool operators who participated in the ITN to start rebuilding and redeploying their infrastructure. One of the reasons why we're doing an internal alpha before doing this is that a lot of the people who participate in that internal alpha will help teach the remaining stake pool operators uh, and give them advice on how to configure. We've noticed that there's a lot of cross-pollination in the ecosystem. A lot of people participate on Telegram. And so we felt it was really important not to slow down our ability to deliver the product to make sure that we train a group of people who could then retrain other people. So we're going to do a friends and family. Then we're going to do a uh, Shelly testnet in, in Haskell, and that's a node in the CLI. And then finally, we have something called the balance check. And basically what the balance check is, is it's everything. It's going to be the node, the wallet, Daedalus, and it's going to contain the Byron and the Shelly consolidated history. So everything together. So effectively, that looks a lot like uh, what Cardano is supposed to be when Shelly is turned on. And the primary validation of this is going to be that the ITN rewards plus the mainnet balances are consolidated. Because what ha happened is that some people participated in the ITN, approximately 12 billion ADA 
give or take a state, uh, and tens of millions of dollars worth of rewards have been paid out for that test. So those have to be consolidated with the existing and remaining mainnet balances. And so that's what the balance check is all about. When the balance check is done, this also is going to be end of life for ITN. So the ITN will be shut off, at least our part of it. It's already decentralized enough if it wanted to, to run for longer uh, because it's practically a cryptocurrency in itself. Uh, but anyway, no more rewards uh, will be honored at that point. That consolidation is going to happen after we've reached the um, end of life. So balance check will be the last uh, Haskell testnet. And basically the point there is to make sure on the consumer side that all the rewards are consolidated. And also this is going to be where the exchanges will be given a full listing experience. So basically that means that all the libraries and all the things that we've been planning for Adrestia will be done, ready to go. And if they integrate against this, uh, then they get some certainty that when the time comes for Shelly mainnet, uh, that all their integrations will not be broken. They'll, they'll be forward compatible from that day. Okay. So after the balance check runs for just a little bit, then what's going to occur is we're going to enter the Shelly upgrade phase. So what that means is that if you go to the Cardano wallet websites and cardano.org and all these other places, and those are being rewritten in anticipation of the launch of Shelly or Daedalus wallet, uh, and then other providers, for example, uh, providers like Uroi, providers like Uroi, uh, basically what you'll be able to do uh, is download a new wallet uh, and that wallet will actually be Shelly. It'll have all the logic for staking, for delegation. Uh, in the Daedalus user interface, you'll actually see the stake pool registration center. All of these things will actually be there, um, but we'll still be running in Byron, meaning that we'll be in a federated consensus and it's going to be running OBFT. Okay? So there's going to be Shelly clients. We're going to replace all of the core consensus nodes with these Shelly clients, and then you, the consumer, can download the new Shelly wallet. And that's going to run for a little bit to give a nice upgrade window because the exchanges have to upgrade. And we also need to make sure that people upgrade in the network. And then we're going to trigger a hard fork. And once that hard fork is triggered, all the Byron relays are shut off, and that means that no Byron code is going to run anymore. Byron's done. Uh, so if any exchange is still left on Byron, the wallets will be locked until they upgrade. And at that point, no more Byron blocks are going to be made. And that means we've then entered the Shelly hybrid phase. So let's talk about that. This is the last phase. So we have this thing called a D parameter in our system and you know D for decentralization. And basically when we've entered the hybrid phase, Shelly is going to have blocks made in two ways. That federation that we mentioned up here is still gonna make some blocks but not get any rewards. So they're making blocks for free. Almost there. Come on. Now. Okay, great. So this federation is still going to make some blocks, and it's going to make it with OBFT. However, because everybody has Shelly clients now, and everybody can understand Shelly clients, stake pools can start registering and operating. And what happens is that when we break an epic down, so that's a period of time where blocks are made, some of these slots are going to be made by the stake pools, and some of these slots are going to be made by those core consensus nodes. And that's controlled by that D parameter, and it's ranging from 0 to 1. So in the beginning, it starts at 1, which means 100% of them are made by the core nodes. Then, epic by epic, 
what will happen is D will gradually decrement. So it'll get smaller and smaller. And that means more and more of the slots will be made by the stake pools that are registered. So there are no limits to the stake pools that can register that K parameter. Of course, we'd like it to be 1,000, but technically you could see 5,000 register. There's going to be competition. There's going to be delegation. And regardless of what the D value is set, 100% of stake pool rewards will go to uh, the stake pools operating on that. So we're going to do some video series and lectures explaining exactly how these work and these triggers work. But basically, D is an either-or situation. So one of two things is going to happen. Either uh, we hit some metrics, and those metrics are going to be things like, if we go up here, the amount of ADA staked. Uh, metrics like network quality and other things that we were measuring with the incentivized test net. And if we hit a collection of metrics that we feel really good about, we say, okay, it's so decentralized, uh, we can just shut this off completely and let 100% of every epic be made by uh, the uh, stake pools or uh, some amount of time, regardless of network quality. So there's no way we sign up for an indefinite commitment. Basically, this is just a phased way, like training wheels effectively, to gradually open up block by block uh, decentralization to the system. And it's a control valve because while we can move D down, we technically can also move D up in the event of some catastrophic event, a bug, uh, or that the network parameters don't look where, like what they're going to look like. Uh, so giving some numbers, uh, epics are going to range between four to five days. We're still working out the final parameterization of how long we want to do an epic because of Preos works a little differently. Uh, uh, and if, for example, we decrement D by 0.10 per epic, then this would be about two months as an example. Or we could do it faster, like 0.2 uh, every epic, and then it would be half the time. It would be about 20 days. So this is a nice control mechanism that will allow us during the hybrid phase to make both OBFT blocks as well as blocks made with Orhorse Prowse. And it's important to understand that these are not test nets. These are real stake pools. Uh, these are actual people making blocks and these are rewards going through. So the whole point of this system is to make sure that we can responsibly retire this federation here, and it doesn't result in a catastrophic issue to the network. So people have confidence that availability will always be there, and we have a high uptime. The whole point of running the incentivized test net, uh, and we had to pay rewards to make it a real life uh, test, was to get a good sense of how decentralized the network was going to be in the beginning. So given that about 40% of those who could participate participated, and if you look at, for example, Tron and Tezos, that puts us about in the middle. Tezos is a little higher. I think they're over uh, 60%. And uh, in Tron, I think they're sitting somewhere around 20, 30% participation. So given this is a test net, we sit between two main nets. Uh, that's a pretty good number. So there's a great indication that from day one, there's going to be a very large set of people willing, capable, and ready. And given our phased approach where we're going to have these three events that give people plenty of time uh, to be able to upgrade. Uh, and by the way, these won't run for months. They're the situation where they're going to run for weeks each. Um, so uh, it's just, a, it's just a, a, a courtesy for people to move infrastructure over. Uh, we have every indication to believe that this D period, this hybrid phase, will be uh, not very long-lived. Anyway, as the network gets more decentralized, when D equals zero, then we have achieved full decentralization. Okay? And full decentralization effectively means that all the blocks being produced are being produced by stake pools. 
and there are no blocks being produced by any core nodes. And those have all been retired and shut down. And what's really cool is that we've developed a new construct that allows us to orchestrate this beautifully. It's called the hard fork combinator. And we're gonna be uh, releasing some information on this. This is another innovation that we created for Cardano that allows us to gracefully hard fork from one consensus system to another and actually be able to live with a dual consensus system with uh, still strong security guarantees and uh, uh, no loss of availability or performance. So it's quite a complicated endeavor, uh, mostly because there's tens of thousands of nodes that have to upgrade. We have to go from a federated consensus system, exchanges have to upgrade, wallets like Uroi have to upgrade, and we also have to make provisions for these operators uh, to basically migrate over, get prepared and ready to go. And then we also have to build a lot of infrastructure and turn a lot of infrastructure on, like, for example, the Explorer infrastructure, uh, and it's non-trivial. But overall, I think we have a really good plan, and we have a lot of evidence that that plan is going to work correctly. So one of the advantages of this design is that we've been able to actually test and verify this design through simulations and formal methods. So we've already run a lot of simulations about these switchovers when we go from an OBFT mode to Prails, showing that those boundaries are OK. And we've been able to really think carefully about this hard fork combinator design. And we've been able to really think carefully about how we're going to handle the decrementing of, of that decentralization metric. So we have a very graceful entry into Shelley. Uh, there's nothing worse when you build infrastructure and then you have a jarring sunning requirement for upgrading and it kind of breaks everything. And we didn't want to have that happen. We wanted to have a situation where we could gracefully upgrade everybody. And uh, this is going to achieve that, I think, with a high degree of probability. Uh, we're going to release a lot of content about it. Cardano.org is going to be completely redesigned. It's already underway. There's a lot of designers from McCann and uh, IOHK, Emergo, and the foundation working together on giving advice about how that content needs to look. Uh, we're also doing a reskinning redesign of a lot of our GUI assets. Uh, so in the coming months, you're going to see all these things uh, trickle out. And Cardano.org is going to be released, uh, the new website, commensurate with the release of Shelley. And when I say Shelley, the Shelley upgrade phase. So you're going to ask, what do you have to do as a consumer? If you're just a user of Daedalus uh, and you want to stake, uh, then the only thing you're going to have to do is when the Shelly upgrade phase begins, uh, just simply go to Daedalus Wallet, download the new version of Daedalus like you did the Byron reboot, install that, and you'll just wait. And then uh, basically when the hybrid phase begins, all the grayed out sections uh, for the stake pool interface will uh, be turned on, and you can rotate your wallet from a Byron wallet to a Shelly wallet. There's gonna be a new dress format during that time period, it's called BEC32. It's a great format. It looks very different. It's about half the size of the current addresses that we have. Uh, and uh, it's got a lot of cool bells and whistles built into it. So you'll rotate your wallet when the hard fork begins. Uh, and uh, at that point, you can stake to anybody you want. If you're a stake pool operator, uh, you'll get involved. If you're not in that inner group right here to help us kind of alpha test a few things, you'll get involved here in the first Shelley Haskell testnet. And that's coming very soon. And basically, at that point, you'll have a node and a CLI. And the idea there is for you to just get used to creating a stake pool, running a stake pool, communicating with other stake pools, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, taking all of that infrastructure for a ride. And uh, if you're an everyday consumer, you can get involved on the balance check side, especially if you participated in the ITN, to verify that the reward consolidation is correct. If you're a stake pool operator in exchange, building infrastructure against the node when the balance check begins, that's when we're going to have everything ready to go for you on the address to your side. So you can begin your burn-in phase and begin your integration phase so that you know, come Shelly hybrid, all your stuff is going to work. OK. Once the Shelly hybrid phase has begun, uh, no Byron infrastructure will work at that point. So if you have an old Byron wallet, any of that stuff, it's not going to work. You have to migrate. So you have to download the new node and restore your old wallet uh, to this uh, to this new thing. And uh, we'll create a lot of guides on how to do that migration. People have done it before. If you participated in the incentivized testnet, you stored your wallet there. That's an example of a migration. 
Uh, so there's going to be a lot of content coming. And because we have an upgrade phase, that'll give you plenty of time to be able to understand what you need to do. Uh, more often than not, it's just simply a restoration and rotation of credentials. Not a lot of work. Uh, but it's important to understand that you must upgrade to be able to continue using Cardano once the Byron phase has come to an end, because no Byron infrastructure will be running anymore, uh, and we'll be in the hybrid phase. We'll be running that hybrid infrastructure. It's also important to understand that uh, this decentralization parameter in the OBFT, this is uh, mostly an operational component, and it's a safety component, but that safety component actually comes for free uh, for all users of Cardano. Uh, the operators of the uh, Shelly OBFT nodes uh, are uncompensated. We get no rewards. Uh, we make no money from that. As I mentioned previously, 100% uh, of the rewards are going to the set of blocks made by the Orbos Prel stake pool operators. So as a consequence, uh, it's in everybody's best interest for uh, this to go away as quickly as possible. So our hope is to decrement D rapidly. And of course, that'll be determined either by a time or it'll be determined by metrics one or one or the other are going to occur first. And personally, I believe that we're going to hit a pretty high degree of decentralization within a month of launching the network if the trends we've seen with the ITN hold. Uh, so uh, hopefully they do, and there's no indication they won't. We've had overwhelming participation, and we're pretty excited about it. Um, what's also nice is this hard fork combinator model that we've come up with gives us a very clear path uh, for doing uh, more upgrades to the system. And because we will never again go from a federated to a decentralized system, all future upgrades will actually be less complicated uh, than this. So there will certainly be hard forks in the future, uh, but those hard forks aren't going to dramatically change the system as much as this. We're changing the way the network stack works. We're changing all the ledger rules. We're changing the consensus rules. It's the most significant upgrade uh, from that perspective. Because we broke it into phases where we have the Byron reboot as a major component uh, of that, and we have these nice phases for going from you know, an early alpha to uh, a Shelly testnet to a balance check, and then we have this transition phase, uh, we think we've built in enough belts and suspenders, enough checks and balances that we can get through this upgrade without a major disruption. Another thing is that these phases, because they're formally described, we've been able to test them aggressively with simulations and formal methods. And we've taken a look at a lot of different cases and scenarios, and we don't think that there's going to be any major issues there. But this is something that we spent quite a bit of time, well over a year actually thinking about and carefully working our way through. Uh, so to recap, uh, Shelly is going to be launched as a series of phases. Here we go from the Byron reboot era to the Shelly upgrade phase to the hybrid phase. Uh, the reboot era is basically getting everything aligned with Ouroboros BFT, so all the infrastructure can talk to the Shelly infrastructure as people are upgrading to the Shelly node. So these two things can basically work together. Uh, during the Shelly upgrade phase, None of the Shelly functionality will be turned on, uh, but you can download a full Shelly node. So, and you're supposed to do that because if you don't, uh, when we get to the Shelly hybrid phase, shortly uh, after uh, the upgrade phase uh, has started, uh, then the Byron infrastructure will be turned off. So you'll have a window of time, exchanges will have a window of time, wallet manufacturers will have a window of time to upgrade. Uh, and then when we get to the hybrid phase, uh, then the hard fork has occurred, and 100% of the blocks are made with the Shelly logic. Delegation's been turned on. Stake pool registration's been turned on. And actually, an increasing amount of the actual network is being manufactured, made, uh, advanced by the stake pools themselves, not by the BFT nodes. And then we have this nice little control mechanism, this D parameter, the D phase, uh, that basically decrements epic by epic, starts at 100%, and it goes down to zero. It'll either hit zero naturally over an amount of time, or it'll hit zero once we hit some predetermined metrics that we'll broadcast after we've um, done our final postmortem on the incentivized test net. So uh, after that occurs, we've entered the fully decentralized Shelly phase. And that means that Cardano is being completely operated by a, 
as we stated in the very beginning of all of this, a dynamic and decentralized consensus algorithm. And that's pretty much it. 10 kilowatts of power, 1,000 operators, 100 times more decentralized than Bitcoin, uh, tons of great security guarantees and benefits, uh, super fast performance. In fact, uh, our belief is that over time, Warboros could transcend well over several hundred transactions per second. I've seen some uh, beliefs from our team that we could hit over 1,000 transactions per second just with this uh, consensus protocol. And that's not optimizing for Hydra or anything else. That's just the base protocol. And uh, because of the hard fork combinator idea, and because of uh, all the prep work that we've done, uh, it's going to be very easy for us to continue upgrading the system and adding in uh, new things. For example, the upgrade to Gobin uh, is just simply an upgrade to the ledger rules, where we go from UTXO to extended UTXO. And we're also going to have a special upgrade for multi-asset support, and that's going to have a dedicated language and other things to make it really easy to issue assets. And because of this process, uh, it's actually quite straightforward for us to roll these things out very quickly. It's also important to understand that Shelley, Gogan, Basho, and Voltaire were actually working on all of these in their own ways in parallel. And so as we do this upgrade to Shelley, uh, the Gogan team is still writing Gogan specifications, the extended UTXO specification, the multi-asset specification, building all the Plutus tooling. There is a full-time team working on Voltaire right now, and they're going to be making some announcements uh, rightfully when we uh, talk about Shelly, when we start launching Shelly. And Rob Cohn is the one de-risking uh, Basho, getting a deeper understanding of what Hydra is going to look like when we need Hydra and create some stubs for that so that Hydra can be implemented by future teams. Uh, it's not really necessary now because we're not even going to saturate the base protocol for several years, more likely than not. But uh, it's nice to know that when it's needed, it'll be there and it'll be very easy to turn on. So all of these are operating in parallel. And uh, basically, this upgrade path is de-risking the most significant and uh, piece of work, which opens up uh, an easy transition to Gogan and Voltaire. Uh, so it's uh, it's been quite a privilege to get here. Uh, this is more than 24 months in the making. It took over a year to design all the components to a point where we felt comfortable getting them where they were going to go. Quite a bit more time than we thought uh, because there were a lot of educations and issues that had to be very carefully taken care of. And also because Byron is a cryptocurrency, it's not a test net, it's a cryptocurrency, there were certain things that we felt were sacred, such as the transaction history. Had we not cared about the old transaction history and the old ledger rules, and uh, we didn't care about people validating that, we could have been uh, launched to market much faster, but that would have meant then that Byron was not a real cryptocurrency. Uh, so we treated it like one, and we invested an enormous amount of time into carefully thinking through backward compatibility so that for the rest of time, all nodes can look at history from September of 2017 moving forward and validate every single transaction regardless if it's under the old SL model, the Byron reboot model, the new Shelley model, or uh, the coming models under Gogan, Basho, and Voltaire. Uh, so, uh, so this is basically how it's all going to come together. Um, Aparna is going to do a product summit, uh, a product uh, workshop um, at the end of this month, at the end of April, and she'll talk a little bit more about this, and then hopefully we'll be able to attach a lot of dates to these things. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who seem to believe that everything's six months out. It's not. Things are coming very quickly. Uh, so this friends and family thing we're already starting to set up. Duncan has a Shelly node running himself, uh, and now we're just wiring some things to it. So uh, th this phase is coming very soon, and Aparna will make some announcements about it. And then uh, once we've reached the balance check, uh, getting to the upgrade phase is uh, very straightforward. And um, I'm not one for leaving large upgrade windows. I don't want to have a two, three month upgrade window. I think that would be insane. Uh, I'd rather have an upgrade phase of about four weeks. And so we'll take a look at where we're at, where people are at. If there's a particularly huge actor, like a massive exchange that would like a little bit more time, uh, then that's certainly open for discussion. But outside of those possibilities, uh, I think it's entirely reasonable to have a, um, a short upgrade phase uh, because it's not really that hard for the user to download a node 
And because the balance check predates the upgrade phase for enterprise integrators, it's going to give them a few extra weeks of lead time uh, to be able to build against that. Uh, so this is how Shelly's coming out. Um, you know, this is hopefully answering a lot of questions for people of wondering uh, about specifics. And everything I've discussed here is going to be broken down as we get closer to it in exhaustive details. So there's going to be videos made, blog posts made, tutorials and guides made, some by us, some by the community, some by the foundation, uh, going over each and every one of these things and giving uh, a lot of parameters and, and so forth. Um, also, uh, we're trying to get a single source of truth with the cardano.org refresh. So our hope is once that's ready to go, uh, you just have to go to one website and no matter what you're looking for, whether you're an operator, you're in the governance side, the developer, or you just want to install a wallet, you have a place to go and it'll be a one-stop shop and it'll be very well organized. And uh, we're also rewriting Cardano docs at the moment. So all the documentation will be redone as we enter in the Shelly upgrade phase. Uh, so that people can use that documentation where they see fit to build their infrastructure. So uh, this is how Shelly is going to work. It's an enormous amount of work on our side. Uh, almost all of it's already done. Uh, to get to this phase, we had to write about a million lines of code across all the teams. And as I mentioned, about two years of, of development effort went into getting to this point. Um, this is also a great way for any cryptocurrency to go from a federated model to a decentralized model. For example, you could replace up here Cardano with Ripple. So if XRP wanted to go from a, their federated consensus to a different consensus model, uh, this would be a, a functional way to do that. Um, Ethereum is going to be a little different because they're going from a proof of work based system to a proof of stake based system. But had they been federated, they could actually move the system from the existing system to this. Uh, so it's uh, really exciting that we've been able to innovate a lot uh, during this. And what's really cool is that we've been moving in an evidence based way throughout this entire process. Uh, so the ITN, for example, gave us an enormous amount of data on basically what those metrics should look like for how we can lower D from one to zero. Uh, and also gave us a good sense of the overall level of participation in the network. We were expecting maybe 10 to 20%, given the nature of it being a test net. The fact that we got four times more than the low end uh, is pretty amazing. And especially given that uh, the incentivized test net had a lot of issues in the very beginning. So uh, that's a super impressive thing. And it's a super exciting thing uh, to, to see that go through. You know, another thing is that the high, Byron reboot, uh, the ability we've had to navigate that code base and quickly change things, add things uh, in, a, in just such a graceful way is a good indicator of the overall code quality that we're entering Shelly into. So Shelly really doesn't feel like an alpha product that's going to require months and months of debugging and tuning to get to a point where it's usable. It really does feel like a production system as we pull these components together. Uh, and it's just a testimony to the processes that we followed. So they were front loaded with a lot of work, but now we're starting to actually see the dividends on the back end. And there's so much complexity when you start thinking about the hard forks and things like that that have to be done. And then there's always these questions of, well, what could go wrong? And the fact that we can run simulations and use formal methods uh, to verify that things can't go wrong or there's a low probability of something going wrong and also talk around these events uh, is something that is unique to Cardano. And it just shows you the, um, the magic of what we've done. So it's taken a long time to get here. It's been, um, it's been a hell of a ride. It's been exhausting. Um, but I'm glad we're here now, and I'm glad that the community's with us. And uh, you guys have some work to do. Uh, so look for the product uh, workshop at the end of the month. Aparna will discuss this in more detail. Some dates will start flowing. In particular, we'll give some dates for when the node CLI uh, testnet's going to hit. Uh, and uh, we should know that completely. Uh, and then when that hits, we should know when the balance check is going to hit. Uh, reminding everybody we're either on a weekly or biweekly release cycle. So these things come very quickly now. And uh, highly, 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 highly recommend that you guys check your um, your wallets out 
and make sure that your ITN rewards and mainnet rewards are consolidated together and that the balance you expect is the balance that's in that state because that's the last opportunity uh, to raise the red flag and say there's some issue there. During the upgrade phase, it's not going to be that hard for most users. It's just simply installing a new wallet and then just waiting for the Shelly hybrid phase to begin. And when that begins, uh, then we're in Shelly. Uh, all the grayed out areas in Daedalus will turn on. And from that point on, you'll rotate your wallets and be able to use Cardano how and when you see fit. Um, this is a skeleton of a lot of different phases. And as I've said repeatedly, uh, each of those phases are going to be discussed in more detail and we're going to provide a lot of content and videos and other things if there's something you don't understand just make a note of it and uh, put it either in the comments section of this video or put it into reddit uh, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, when we create that content uh, we release that content uh, uh, in a way that uh, try to answer your question um, it's also important to understand that uh, this process is not a slow one. It's going to be a very rapid one. So normally when you do test nets and phases, you run them for months. Uh, we are, we're just simply not going to do that. Uh, we're going to run things as they're ready and get things out as they're ready. So there's going to be a lot of pushing. And uh, there, if you miss a date, uh, for example, this Node CLI, you forget about it, go on vacation if you can in coronavirus times. Uh, you might wake up tomorrow and then see that balance check has already started. So be very, very attentive. Uh, watch our Twitter feed, watch our YouTube channels. I'd highly recommend subscribing to the Emergo Cardano Foundation and IOHK official Twitter accounts. And I'd highly recommend subscribing to the IOHK YouTube page uh, and making sure notifications are turned on because stuff is going to be pushed out on a weekly basis, in some cases daily basis, as we quickly march our way uh, through, this, uh, through this upgrade cycle. Uh, so uh, you can stay as informed as possible. Um, if you have any questions, do put them in the comments. Uh, you can always tweet at me too. Uh, yeah, many of you, of course, will. Uh, and other than that, thank you so much for listening. Uh, this is my first whiteboard video I've done in a few years, but I felt it'd be appropriate since we're just about to enter the Shell era uh, to, uh, to do that. And uh, I hope everybody has a smooth and graceful uh, upgrade to Shelly. I know I will. Thank you so much.